with a shot cam under. An S1 over and steel down the middle. Roy is doing driven pheasants southern Swedish style. When everything goes to crap, it's <laughs> yak yak. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm off to a clay ground which puts bounce into the sport. The antis are up to their usual violent tricks. Deborah Hadfield talks to a big game hunter from Essex currently suffering from a Daily Mirror article. I have been receiving life-threatening phone calls, emails, messages. We have a field test piece with Mark Ripley from Scott Country, talking about a two and a half thousand pound thermal imager. We're giving away more booze. This time it is a whiskey box from the Elliot Ross Company. David brings you the news from the news stump and James Marchington has hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Boar were big in Sweden, driven pheasants ruled the roost. As part of Roy's trip to Aimpoint, the gun sights company is treating him and other guests, such as Swedish YouTuber Jonas Jompen Malm, to a driven bird day in the grounds of this beautiful estate, in the first snow this area has seen for 10 years. This dusting certainly sets the place off beautifully. Our channel is called Jakt är Jakt, which, is, which means uh, hunting is hunting, sort of c'est la vie, you know, when, when everything goes to crap, it's <laughs> Jakt Jakt. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, it's on YouTube and we are um, Scandinavia's uh, biggest online uh, hunting um, channel. Okay, super. Uh, and we've done, I am the co-founder yep. and uh, also the host. Okay, super. Uh, but you, ca you came into it the, the, a little bit of an old way around, yeah? yeah? I, was, you, I, was, I was, you were behind the before. camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things happened, so I had to sort of take the step in front of the camera stuff. And you actually went through, did all your hunting license and did everything so you could then... Yes, I didn't actually hunt when we started the channel. I was just, you know, producing, uh, shooting, editing and uh, so on. Superb, so there's hope for David. Hey, could, yeah, he, it all. <laughs> it's like when the drummer becomes the lead singer. Right? <laughs> you, you might actually start to hunt someday. Okay. He wants We've us. We've got to go. <laughs> all right, <Good>. <laughs> As David can't drum or sing, he's staying where he is. The guests are all using Aimpoint's S1, the red dot sight designed for shotguns. We've seen these put to good use on geese and driven ground games such as hare and row, where it is traditional and legal to hunt the small deer with shotguns and buckshot. Like Bono. <laughs> <laughs> to get the guys warmed up, it's a couple of hours on the clays. Is there a decent tea here? <laughs> yeah. yeah? Good. We have a special tea for you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Roy, what do you reckon? You still miss the money shot, mate. You really? Yeah. I mean, uh, no, I, I, I honestly think you should invest in one. Well, it's warming up. It's starting to, slowly, mate. It's bitter. It is absolutely bitter. You didn't snuggle me last night either, so that was very cold and lonely. Oh. Paul. Ah, ah. <laughs> Paul. Ready? When you're just coming back and using an S1 on a shotgun, you're, you're changing. You're changing from a um, more of an instinctive shooting to to then uh, almost back to where you would be with your your driven shooting with a rifle. You've just got to sort of relearn your leads a little bit. Once you've adjusted to that, it's quite easy to reproduce that sight picture. Ready? Oh, you, yeah, good. Like Is that, that. that where you wanted? Yeah. Okay. Pull. Okay. Happy? Can we go and have some coffee again? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Back to our estate, which is just metres from Sweden's southern coastline. The guns head out for a bonus starter drive. There's a duck pond not far from the house, which we mustn't disturb before the beaters are in place. I'm 
Unfortunately, Roy's not in the shooting, but there's time yet. Again, just another fantastic, fantastic estate, and we've been blessed with another beautiful day. So hopefully we should be in for a bit of sport. A few of the guys have uh, had a bit of sport further down the line, and uh, we'll see if, we're, uh, if we get into the running or not. On the second drive, David confesses it's his birthday and is more than happy to spend it on a romantic break to Scandinavia with Roy. Apparently, it's David's 58th birthday. I didn't, re I didn't realise that we'd come round again there and, and I'm having to spend yet another year with Mr Wright. So, um, yeah, he's, he's decided to spend it with me. It's just been such a romantic weekend. <laughs> Amazing. And we find ourselves out on a beautiful morning together, walking in the woods hand in hand. Anyway, on with business. We're just in front of a, a pheasant drive here. I think it's going to be some nice little uh, snap shooting coming back. We've got a, a little bit of a, I don't know, 20, 30 metre gap above us. It's probably a better drive for somebody that's feeling a little bit more limber. David might need to leverage me back, but um, I'll yeah. catch you. I'll catch you. You'll catch me, thank I'll you. Catch you <laughs> it's either that I'm going to be doing snow angels. Um, <laughs> it, could, it could get fun, it is a bit slippy underfoot. Man, I'm waiting for them to get up. Roy finally gets a few birds over. Some, he thinks, are sporting, others not. All the guns are using steel, so does that change the distance of a sporting bird? We will chat more about that sticky issue later. Uh -huh. As nice as it is, Roy would prefer not to be quite so close to these birds. You've got a love-hate relationship with those things right now, haven't you? I always enjoyed going out on the pheasants and just did a, an awful lot of pheasant shooting. But um, obviously at the, uh, at the moment with the, um, the current status of bird flu, man, this, this is a particularly bad year. And obviously for me with the birds, with the falcons, we have to be incredibly careful. So yeah. I, I try to avoid walking anywhere, anywhere near a pheasant. I try to avoid picking up a pheasant. I try to definitely avoid ducks and geese. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I feel that I'm going to have to go home and bathe myself in Vercon and probably burn all my clothes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Aimpoint's top trainer explains to Roy who would benefit most from using the S1 on their barrel. So the ones that are wrong eye dominant, mm -hmm. so they are dominant on the left eye but they're shooting from the right shoulder. I think for them it will help really much and I'm that type of person so for me it's actually a help okay. because I got the dominance over to my shooting eye Right. so I can keep the focus and I can use both eyes open so that's one person and then I will say for these hunters it's a super good tool when you're sitting down or oh, laying nice down yeah, yeah. and uh, coming up from your position and you should take the shot and you can go through and pull the trigger when you're actually in front of the bird guys that are already good in shooting shotgun mm -hmm. I think that will slow down this type of shooter yeah, yeah. because they will be confused when they got the red dot in front of the eye and that will take the focus away from the bird. But the, the really good shooter that have hard to get the line on a certain bird, then you can get the line with it and then you can take it away again. Uh, also just to get how much in front you should be of the bird. Uh, so just get some preferences that you should be that much in front, then you have that in the head and then you can go back to normal shotgun again. Drive three and Roy is back going. Not much distinguishes this shoot from a driven day at home, apart from there being a lot more sweets on offer than booze. Swedes favour Haribo over slow gin. Roy finds his feet on this drive and gets some nice shooting. Let's finish somebody else's bird then. The last drive is going to be tricky, with a small window of opportunity. Some of the guns are shooting birds lower than you would expect on a British shoot, but attitudes may have to change if we're going to move from lead to steel. And as Roy suggests, 
it shouldn't affect your day. Oh, I didn't record. Oh, yeah, he's recording. <laughs> <laughs> and here, a lot of the birds, you know, still very sporting birds, but not the sort of presentation of uh, pheasants that you would get on some of the high bird shoots back in the UK. They're using a, a much more traditional pheasant. They're not, uh, you know, they're not shooting some of the, um, the Michigans and things like that. But again, yeah, a fantastic day sport. You've got the camaraderie, you've got the, you know, the teamwork, and you're having just as good a day, um, you know, spending it, spending it with, with friends and uh, colleagues. Just uh, probably not going to be stretching our barrels as much as we have done previously. Just before the horn goes, we get a roebuck dance through. Good job that wasn't yesterday. <laughs> Did you get that? That was stunning, wasn't it? That was lovely watching that buck come through there. What oh, a beautiful, beautiful scene. Absolutely glorious. It's been a hectic three days for Lord Lupton with Aimpoint in Sweden, from cinemas to high seats to plays to pheasant drives, all while avoiding bird flu. This cool country has a long tradition of hunting, which is adapted as new species have arrived. It's also a nation where hunting is accepted and respected. What's not to like? For more information about the Aimpoint Micro S1, go to aimpoint.com or find it on Kitfinder. Thank you, Joe. Now, this week's prize is a lovely whiskey box from the Elliott Ross Company. We gave away the shoot party box a few weeks ago. This is designed for a couple of friends on the hill in an armoured ammo box container. It comes with a bottle of Glen Farkless single malt and costs £130 on the Elliott Ross Company website. If you would like to know how to enter the draw, watch the Field Sports Nation's own TV show, Field Sports Extra, which is out on Tuesdays, and you can do that by joining the Field Sports Nation for a fiver a month. No, insert drink related joke here. It is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Gamekeepers are baffled that someone has apparently dumped five goshawks in Suffolk. Few gamekeepers see that many goshawks in a year, though bird flu has been killing numbers of buzzards this winter and may be killing other raptors too. The shot that shows up in the x-rays released by police is harder to explain. In a tweet, Suffolk Police blames the shooting community for the deaths. They say the birds were found next to a car park near Bury St Edmunds, though they do not reveal who found them. A police spokesperson says that all the birds were x-rayed, but doesn't say who x-rayed them. All the birds appear to contain shot, but police cannot explain why one of them is labelled parrot. An independent review has found that antis regularly submit heavily edited footage to police as evidence of illegal hunting. Labour's North Wales Police and Crime Commissioner Andy Dunbobbin commissioned the report from Wrexham Glendower University. It vindicates concerns expressed by pro-hunting groups such as the Countryside Alliance, who suspect SABs waste police times with fraudulent video footage. The report corroborates the evidence of police officers in North Wales who say hunt saboteurs often provided them with footage which is often edited or grainy, long distance and of no evidential value. Hunt prosecutions often depend on evidence obtained by anti-hunt activists such as the League Against Cruel Sports, according to a barrister-led review of the issue in 2014. The resources handed over to North Wales Police out of the public purse need to focus on real crime, looking after the vulnerable people and children, which has come out in this report. And it is time for the Police Crime Commissioner to take note of the report that he commissioned and to move forward with policing in North Wales in a proper manner and to look after our residents and to take those to task who continue to present the police force with fraudulent, heavily edited evidence. The Clay Pigeon Shooting Association is thinking of changing its name. The CPSA is consulting members on whether to drop the word pigeon in favour of the word target. It says that the change could help modernise the sport's brand image in order to help attract new shooters, members and sponsors from outside the sport. You can take part in the consultation, link below. John Muir Trust has been a staunch supporter of Scottish land reform, but now a group of crofters is considering taking over John Muir Trust land. The Trust obtained a licence for a mass slaughter of deer out of season and at night on its Quinega estate in Sutherland, 
outraged crofters who own the estate next door following a taxpayer-backed buyout in 1993 are reacting angrily to the loss of the deer. Their business model, approved by the Scottish Government, relies on hunting tourism. They plan to use Scotland's land reform legislation to remove the trust from its ground. A Westminster Government Minister has committed to taking a balanced approach and keeping an open mind over snares. A petition of more than 100,000 signatures triggered a parliamentary debate on the subject. Speaking in Westminster Hall, not the main chamber of the House of Commons, DEFRA Minister Trudy Harrison said the government's stance on snares in England needs to be looked at, but she didn't commit to further laws. DUP MP Jim Shannon and the chairman of the EFRA Select Committee, Sir Robert Goodwill, have highlighted the importance of snares, which they call humane cable restraints. Mr Shannon says snares protect birds such as curlew and lapwing from predators. He told the committee how the manufacture, sale and use of snares in the UK are already subject to legislation and various codes of practice. Snares are really important because at certain times of the year and in certain locations, they are the only method that will work. So if we think about the spring when the cover is high, we have birds nesting on the ground at the most vulnerable, that's one of the times when snares are really needed. What we need to do, we need to use the most modern snare design, humane cable restraints, in accordance with the relevant government codes of practice to ensure that we can continue to use these important devices. The Scottish Hunting with Dogs Bill is in its final stages. The Scottish Countryside Alliance is meeting with Environment Minister Mari McCallum and Nature Scots Licensing Office to lobby for amendments that would protect the use of dogs in predator control. The bill that further restricts hunting with hounds is in its third stage. The SCA fears that if the government doesn't listen and agree to changes, rough shooting will become a criminal offence because of the change in the use of dogs. It also warns that the Greens and Labour may introduce last minute wrecking amendments, which may make it even more difficult to use dogs to catch predators. A postal worker has sparked anger on Twitter after posting an image of a door with hanging pheasants next to it. Kathy Hodgson took to Twitter to complain about the BBC TV show Countryfile featuring shooting. The Green Party member wrote, hashtag countryfile, what on earth were you thinking? In her tweet she said, I have to deliver post to this mailbox at this time of year. There are rarely less than six pheasants hanging around it, which she called archaic. The Twitter sphere soon replied. One tweet said, it is not impeding anything and as for birds being hung, there is no better sight in shooting. A one-eyed seal in an Essex reservoir is eating up all the fish. It swam into the Marks Hall Fisheries Lake and is evading capture. The lake has been forced to close and it is estimated the visitor has eaten £3,000 worth of fish. It's also believed to be eating local ducks. Nick North leases the lake from Rochford District Council and is losing £500 a day in tickets for fishing. I've been told now that I'm not allowed to attempt any more nettings or anything like that to try and catch it as it's a protected species. Oh, there he goes, look, just getting out of the water, had another nice meal, he's on Paradise Island. The chairman of the Masters of Foxhounds Association, Andrew Osborne, is rowing across the Atlantic Ocean in memory of his daughter, Amy. She died unexpectedly five years ago, aged 25, from an undiagnosed heart condition. The former master and huntsman of the Cottesmore Hunt is rowing a boat called In Full Cry. The trip, which started in the Canary Islands, will take around 90 days. Andrew will sail around 3,000 miles before he reaches his destination in Antigua. He is raising money for the charity his family set up, Cardiac Risk in the Young, or CRY. Link below. And finally, a bear has attacked a Swedish gamekeeper out checking a feeder. Johan Johansson was looking at the feeder in a wood in Uppsala County when a bear stood up on two legs behind him. The animal attacked and bit the former UN soldier badly on the right hand. The 52-year-old went to hospital where he told a local newspaper how at first he thought it was a wild boar that came out of the forest. He heard it roaring. When he turned round, he came face to face with the bear. His plucky dog, called Gordon, barked and chased the bear back into the forest. Gordon is a Gonsi Polski, or Polish hunting dog, well known as a breed that is not afraid of anything. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Talking the stories, fishing for facts. Buying shooting kits? Then head to Kit Finder, and our team will help you find the right product at a fair price from dealers all over the UK. 
Kit Finder, the shooting kit comparison website. Next, a Field Sports Channel member is having problems shooting straight, don't we all? He asked me to join him on a shooting lesson near his home in Devon. Ashcombe Shooting Ground in Devon has had a makeover. <laughs> We've got to have a go. I've never shot anything bouncing off a trampoline before, so uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. What's your advice, Steph? So just get on and shoot it in the face. <laughs> so that's what our guinea pig clay shooter, Philip, does. Pull. Pull. Yeah, I managed to hit those. <laughs> Convincingly, anyway. They say trampoline targets, we've smashed them. <laughs> now on to the driven. Field Sports Nation member Philip Young is at Ashcombe for a lesson with instructor Steph Davey. Uh, it's one of my local uh, shooting grounds, I only live about 15 minutes away. I used to come here quite frequently um, with groups of people from work and uh, friends just for practice of game shooting, just for a bit of fun, really. Um, but today, I need a bit of help, basically. My driven shooting has sort of suffered in recent years, so I just need a bit of a brush up and just get the technique right with uh, the driven birds and see if I can uh, get myself back on form again. Steph does a lot of these kinds of shooting lessons. I tend to find people will uh, not take the bird on and read the bird correctly, so they see the birds come and think, oh, quick, there they come, there they come, and they don't take the second to read the bird, will either not measure that line correctly, not to get the speed and not get the gun in the shoulder. So that's those three things tend to be the main issue. I tend to go off to the side quite a bit or, well it depends what sort of birds we're shooting. If it's uh, partridge I might go in too far in front, give them too much lead um, because I think they're going quicker than they actually are. Uh, pheasants I don't tend to have too much of an issue with lead wise, but again it's, it's the line of the bird I think is what I tend to struggle with. I just can't keep the sort of consistent line pushing through and then I end up missing to the side. I've had my eye dominance checked, I've had various gun fits over the years as well, so I can't blame the equipment, unfortunately. It's, it's literally just down to me. Uh, possibly a lack of practice as well, I think I could do with a little bit more, so hopefully try and get out a bit more and uh, have a lesson just to get me back in the swing of things. Steph puts one over Philip just to watch. Up there, nice and steady little partridge. So what I'd like to see, Phil, is I'd like you to see how you approach the bird and we'll make any corrections as necessary. Okay. Pull. So what do you reckon then, Phil? Talk to me. I think I might have been slightly offline on that again. It, it, it felt like I shot slightly underneath it maybe. Okay. And possibly stopped my swing as well. Okay, so there's a few things that I want to look at in how we address the bird or the target. So I'd like you to tell me, where do you first see the bird? I was picking it up roughly around that, uh, that tree there very small window I suppose uh, okay. for picking it up. So one thing I'd like to change is where we start our gun, so our gun hold position. Okay. You said you see the bird up here but yet yep. your gun was almost blocking out that view. Ah, okay. It doesn't give you much time to see and read the bird, get onto that line. So what I'd like to do, we'll change our gun hold, okay. bring it slightly lower back to where we first see that target and then we're going to swing through and just push to the front edge for me. <laughs> I believe in you. Nice to know somebody does. So start off and we get a bit further back. Yep, perfect. And then just push through. Yep. Okay. Pull. But again, I'm not sure if I swung through on the line of the bird or if I pulled to the side of it. There's one thing that we can do to change that. Okay. We're going to move our feet. A typical game shot, we never move our feet. We get on the bird and we do a little <laughs> dip or we try and swing round and it's really difficult. So I'd like you just to turn a fraction to your left. Cool. When you're ready, here he comes. Pull. I'm not sure if I'm going through the bird enough. I think I'm catching up with it. Yes. But then not pushing through that last little bit. Possibly. Oh, you deserve a gold star today. Right, you okay. know what you're talking about. You don't need me here. <laughs> okay, so we've got our feet sorted, yep. our gun hold position. Yep. We've got the line of bird, we just need to push on through. Pull. Excellent shot. Did that little side step make a lot of difference. I've got a bit more uh, visibility now because obviously the tree's there. I've got a bit more open sky to see the target. Uh, so that definitely helped. I just need to slow the swing down, I think. Now. I was going to say, it's a common problem with men getting a bit overexcited on the first <laughs> shot. So we'll just take a nice deep breath, take a pause and then go for that second target. Okay. Hold. Excellent shot. Much better. Feeling good? Yeah, that felt a lot more comfortable. Um, again, no stretching. Didn't feel like I was actually stretching to, to hit the bird. 
didn't give it much lead either. Um, surprised at how little lead I actually gave that. It was literally just in front, past its nose and pulled the trigger. That second of reading that target allows you to judge the, di the speed and also the distance that you are from that bird, which your brain will automatically work out the lead. So it. a lot of people go, six bar gate, pack of the fags, whatever it is. No, no, just read that bird, push on through. On the money. Excellent. Success for me in any lesson, let alone today with Philip, um, is to be able to completely and 100% diagnose the issue, to, to be able to acknowledge that it's all well and good me teaching today, but he's got to be able to take that away and put that into practice into the field. So to be able to give him those tools to go away, feel confident, and to, um, to walk away feeling really good to get out in the field. Now, you may notice that Philip is using a side-by-side. -side. I have to ask, why? This is quite an old gun, um, about 99 years old. Uh, it's a Frederick Beasley, um, London-built side lock ejector. I've had it a few years now. I do shoot surprisingly well with it. I've sort of moved back to side-by-sides recently, having shot a lot of over and unders over the years. Uh, just gives me an immense sense of enjoyment, really, having something historical like that to shoot. There is plenty to shoot with it here. Local gun shop Sportsman Gun Centre took over Ashcombe in the autumn of 2022. It refurbished it and it installed a new manager. Don Brunt, who came from Dorset originally, uh, who I've known for probably 15, 20 years, has come down as one of the directors. Um, and him and his team have done an amazing job. The, bu the business, the store here, uh, the shoot was closed for seven weeks before we took it back on and opened it. Um, and in that time scale, he has opened up many, many new stands. Uh, there were only three clays originally, the original pattern that had been here for probably quite a few years. Um, and now we also have over 200 sporting clays out there targets uh, at any one time. So um, uh, hopefully Devon's finest. Did it beep or anything? Oh! Hang on, it says target equal four, make selection. What? <laughs> I don't know, that's why I'm, I'm looking at the box. Target equals four, make selection. What did you do? I just pressed the B button instead. Yeah, so you've got sporting layout, there's a few compact layouts, and then go up into the woods, so very nice simulated out and um, very realistic style of shooting out on the clay ground and um, plenty of variety of targets which is always nice and catch some people out put some practice in go on you can do it so I'm um, based in Dorset primarily. I've, I've travelled down to Ashcombe for the last sort of few years and obviously now that uh, it's been taken over, new management as well, I'm making a bit more of an effort to uh, expand my horizons as it were and then expand into Devon and do a bit more down here. So you obviously love it here? I was going to say, what's not to love? Got beautiful countryside, great shooting and um, a nice playground. So yeah, suits me down to the ground. We will be and, and do currently cater for people like corporate. We do uh, individual training and coaching. We were having open days. We now have CPSA competitions. Um, there's some exciting news, a three or four day major international event taking place at Ashcombe, which I can't really talk about, but you are the first person to know. Um, and we'll keep developing the site. So uh, we're going to remove around about 200 trees due to um, dieback. Um, and that will then create a whole new uh, avenue of uh, sporting clays. Um, and also there will soon be uh, some exciting information about a very new high tower. And there are details of how to contact both Ashcombe and Steph in the description below. Thanks, Philip, for fixing that for me. Now, from peaceful countryside to more of a battle, this is a story about how antis will go to extreme lengths to get their message across. A food delivery to the wrong address or something more sinister. After being the victim of a vicious hate campaign from antis, hunter Saeed Rizwan is no longer sure. The Essex businessman has received hundreds of abusive messages after being smeared in an article in the Mirror newspaper for his legal international hunting. He was so scared, he called the police. They came, they've done their bit. I mean, obviously it's their duty to, to, to turn up, but they have very clearly passed the message to me that there's nothing they can do. It's a civil matter. And if we can only help if something actually happened because nothing actually happened and i said i mean this was very shocking to me because the police they are telling me they can't do anything the father of three pours hundreds of thousands of pounds into wildlife and biodiversity projects all over the world after an article in the daily mirror newspaper antis descended on him they called him scum and filth 
as the newspaper named his business, which he runs from home, it was easy for aunties to track down him and his family. Syed is protecting his family and they have gone to stay with a relation. When I saw the article, I was completely shocked and more worryingly, I mean, what she, most of the things I've said, she never mentioned those, but she, whatever I said, she quoted them in a way that makes me look like a killer. And on top of that, she mentioned my company's details, my car details, my car photos, mentioned about my kids, my company registered at my home address. And the direct result for this is, I mean, I have been receiving life-threatening phone calls, emails, messages. The reason the aunties hate him is because he also hunts the wildlife he conserves. While his money pays for millions of acres of habitat, he goes into that habitat to hunt big game. He posts pictures from his hunts on Facebook and his family and friends applaud him. The newspaper used the pictures from his social media posts without permission. I was born in Pakistan and I brought up in a hunting community and to be honest there are places in Pakistan where they only live on the money which comes from the conservation these guys do. For example, if I give you an example of Gilgit Baltistan area in Pakistan, their only way of income is what they when when hunter goes there and pays a trophy fee and 80% of that trophy fee goes towards towards the community to build their schools, hospitals. Everything they do is out of the money which hunters give them. Side's experience is nothing new as antis and the media frequently target hunters. Mirror is pretty lightweight, uh, although it is a campaigning newspaper and they've already made up the, their minds that they want to ban hunting. They want to ban overseas hunting by British sportsmen. So they don't approach any of these stories with an open mind. They approach it as a campaigner. So we, we don't have proper journalism going on here. We have a team at the Daily Mirror who are tasked with ending sport hunting abroad by British people, and they spin every story that they can to that end. Side is taking action against the Daily Mirror, complaining to the newspaper ombudsman Ipso that the newspaper invaded his privacy and the privacy of his children. He's also taking out a copyright claim against the newspaper. If there's anything we guys do, to take these people to court so they won't be doing this thing to any any other person because what they are doing if they wanted to, to campaign about trophy hunting they should be just campaigning about trophy hunting itself if they wanted to write an article about me why why took it personal why she was mentioning my family my kids my business that means they have something else they have agenda is some something else i mean obviously what i believe they are working for money Said said he was misrepresented. Hunting tourism pays for most of the wildlife and biodiversity in southern Africa. Instead, the journalist chose to describe his actions as vile and disturbing in her article. The Daily Mirror photographer snapped Said and his vehicle at his home, which the Mirror chose to print and put out online. The journalist highlighted the most obvious part of his vehicle number plate too. This makes it easy to identify him in his hometown of Rainham. I was quite shocked. I mean, at the same time, I was I was worried about it as well. I mean, I was, I was thinking, I don't know what will be the outcome of it. I mean, I didn't even know that from the cars behind, they are actually recording me or taking my photographs and stuff. I mean, I was almost, I mean, I just woke up in my pajamas and all that. It was horrible, very horrible. As a result of the first article, other newspapers and media outlets have published the story without contacting Syed. And animal rights extremists have posted pictures of one of his children on social media. It is actually media bullying and these people can get away with that and we have to do something to stop them because what I have gone through or the people like me have gone through, I mean, people have lost their livelihoods, their business, their work. I mean, some people got, you know, uh, been expelled from their jobs. So it's, it is bad. As a person living in the real world, you have to understand there are predators out there in the press who want to use us to feed their stories and they're hunting for us. So don't give them anything if you don't know, if, you don't, if you're not prepared for it to, uh, to come back and, and, and become a, an issue for you to deal with. 
Said is disappointed the police do not offer more protection as a crime prevention measure. Former detective Ian Jensen says forces are in a difficult position. The threats to kill requires specific intent on a person making the threat, and that intent is that, that the individual would, would uh, receive the threat and believe it. And it's hard, really, to, to get that kind of evidence unless the person either tells you that's what they intended or whether it's obvious from what they've, they've done, their actions and their behaviour. Now, writing it on social media, I mean, everyone's writing threats to kill to everybody, aren't they, on social media? Everyone gets very upset, very irate, and it seems to be a platform where people's agitations are amplified. I'm not suggesting for one minute that this hasn't impacted on Mr Reswan, I'm sure it has, but from the police point of view, they probably just see a lot of activists just demonstrating how angry they are about what's happened, mostly to other activists to say, look, this is how angry I feel, especially on a pylon like this. I called the police straight away. I've called them actually a few times. They came twice and they said, look, there's nothing we can do to help you until something happens. And I said, well, that's a very good protection from you guys. So basically, I don't know. I mean, last night, I, we, we all have to flee the house and we, I went to my brother's house just to, just to be safe because all of these uh, so-called anti-hunters, they can turn up and they are saying we are going to come to you and we're going to trash you in the same way what you did to these animals. Side's experience is mirrored across the world too. Robbie Kroger of pro hunting channel Blood Origins in America says hunters are constantly fighting the tide of lies from antis. The practice of hunting is completely legal, completely sustainable and is saving habitat and wildlife all over the world. Now that you are the environmental editor of a newspaper article and you didn't bother to even look for the slightest bit kernel of truth behind what he might have been saying that could actually be right. What kind of journalist doesn't even bother to do any research? Despite the abuse, Side won't give up hunting. I believe what I'm doing is, is actually for the good of animals. I mean, it's for uh, what I'm doing, I think I'm actually saving the animals going to be extinct. What they are doing is actually, what, they are not helping them. They are causing more problems for people like us who conservate and eventually, like I gave an example already for Kenya, the animal will be, be vanished from this world. And this is why I think it's more important. The Mirrors campaign, these people's decision that they really, really want to push trophy hunting ban, you know what it's going to do? It's going to lead to hundreds of thousands of people all around the world to have their livelihoods affected poverty, job loss, no meat provisions anymore to people. If you've been the victim of bullying from antis or the media, please contact us. Thanks, Saeed. You may have views either way on lion hunting and whether you would do it, but that level of abuse, encouraged by a national newspaper, is appalling. Now let's head to Scott Country to learn about a thermal imager. This, the Falcon FQ50, is the sharpest thermal spotter currently on the market. The picture quality is superb. It's a lovely little unit, it's nice, fits nicely in the hand. All the buttons are nicely spaced as well so that you can hit the right ones at the right time. You've got a record button on there which records directly to the inbuilt memory. Uh, you've got a zoom on it and obviously a power button at the front there. Built in lens cover, focus on the front. And really, this, this unit, where it really shines, is the picture quality. I mean, it is, it is superb. So with that picture quality, um, it, it, it basically means if you're struggling to ID something, like a fox, then uh, with this, it's going to be a lot clearer than a lot of other units. So in theory, you should be able to um, ID things a lot, a lot sooner than what you would with a less efficient unit. Now this unit runs on a 18650 battery which is just in there so it's quick and easy to change and you can just carry a couple of them in your pocket well not that you need to because one battery will give you uh, approximately five hours use so yeah I mean with a with the two batteries that are supplied with it then um, that's going to see you through a, a good night's foxing or, or as we are tonight rabbiting.
the nice thing about this with the, the picture quality being as good as it is, even when you zoom right in on things, you don't get that pixelation that you would normally get on a lot of units. This, this uh, unit remains very clear. So I've been very impressed with this. I think uh, Hick are certainly going the right way about sort of cornering the market with products like this. And also the price as well. I think this retails, if I remember right, it's about two and a half thousand for one of these, which for the picture quality, bearing in mind that it is the best on the market, as far as I'm aware, then um, you'll certainly get a lot of uh, a lot of bang for your buck. Thanks, Mark. And you can buy the unit from Scott Country or search for it on Kit Finder. Now from tech to the sometimes more old fashioned yet still best hunting and shooting films on YouTube brought to you by James Marchington, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Here's a fascinating film from an American hunting channel. They're after whitetails in Kansas, using a deer cutout mounted on a bow as both a hide and a decoy. Good to see them devote several days to following up a wounded buck. Maybe this would have made their job easier. It's a deer recovery service using a thermal drone to track down a buck that the hunter hit but can't find. Meanwhile, David from Predator Protection UK has been to the Philippines. He visits a shooting club, has fun shooting various 9mm pistols and finds the local gun laws a bit of an eye-opener. Back in the UK, Tony Yates has made this lovely film of a driven pheasant day in the East Anglian Fens. He says he's capturing this sort of day for posterity as he feels driven shooting's days are numbered. Let's hope he's wrong. Here's Here's a look at the long-running conflict between antis and wildfowlers in Fintorn Bay near Inverness. Full marks to Will Hall for letting both sides state their case, although he does let the antis get away with some dreadful fibs. TGS Outdoors has released the latest episode in its Top Gear style gun review series. In this one, they compare three semi-autos at very different price points. Tyler Ellis sends us his latest film, making short work of rats at night on a new permission, using the ATN X Site 4K Pro. And finally, Corvid Hunter has made this video Video to explain the need to control grey squirrels and shows the best way to do the job with an air rifle and feeding station. That's it for this week. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email Charlie the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please visit over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can take a like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our constant contact page, our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>